good night's sleep is something most of us aspire to, but many fail to achieve on a regular basis. What's more, it's absolutely essential for good health. Modern life seems to be taking its toll, the average city-dwelling adult getting two hours less sleep per night than just 40 years ago. In Europe and the United States, one in three people has some kind of sleeping disorder. And it can have serious consequences, from lethargy to weight gain, hypertension to depression and heart problems. In this edition of Health, we'll be looking at the conditions that can turn your night into a nightmare, from insomnia to sleep apnea. We're also investigating why so many teenagers aren't getting enough shut-eye. And finally, we'll take you to Africa, where a kind of sleep sickness transmitted by tsetse flies can cause organ failure and even death. But first, some news in brief. Good news for migraine sufferers. A new drug's being tested that's proving to be more effective and less risky than existing medicines. 15% of adults in industrialised countries suffer from the condition. A novel way for Chilean commuters to get some exercise. The stairway in one Santiago subway station has been transformed into a giant piano. It's part of a cardiovascular disease awareness campaign. We spend an average of a third of our lives sleeping, meaning that by the age of 60, most of us have spent 20 years asleep. But millions are less fortunate, however. From being simply unable to drop off to being unable to breathe whilst asleep, ever more people are turning to specialised sleep clinics to help them reach that elusive golden slumber. Counting sheep, flies on the wall, or falling asleep with the TV on, Marie Christine has tried it all. Like 20% of the world's population, she's an insomniac, by far the most common sleep disorder. It's awful. When I watch TV, I nod off, so I go to bed, but then I can't sleep. Women are twice as likely as men to suffer from insomnia and the odds get worse as they get older. Doctors recommend patients learn how their bodies function. We help patients define their sleeping type if they need more sleep, less sleep, if they go to bed late or early. This former night owl finally found his rhythm. I needed to go to bed after 11.30. Before, I'd go to bed at 10.30. I sleep through the night now. Sleep apnea is another disorder, one that affects 2 to 4 percent of people around the world. Sleepers stop breathing for several minutes at a time and more than 80 times a night, an illness detected thanks to sensors and cameras in sleeping centers and that needs to be addressed. There are severe cardiovascular consequences, hypertension in the arteries, myocardial infarction, stroke. The effects are dangerous because the body doesn't rest at night and tissues can't regenerate their oxygen levels. Sleep apnea is most common in older, overweight men. But sleep disorders can also result from bad lifestyle habits. Stress, long commutes or off-kilter hours contribute to restless nights or make patients sleep too much. In those cases, hypersomnia can signal depression. It's a common stereotype of teenagers that they're constantly tired and moody. But in fact, they do need more sleep than adults. Between 9 and 10 hours a day is recommended. Between work, studies, socialising and the constant allure of modern technology, many are getting a lot less and the consequences can be a lot more severe than just lethargy and moodiness. Never-ending phone calls, hours spent on the internet. Every night, it's the same story. I'm up till 1 or 2 a.m. I call my friends, I never get to sleep, then I go on the computer. If some teens don't feel tired, that may be because the light from the computer screens interferes with the body's production of melatonin. That's a hormone that signals sleepiness. Coupled with a changing biological clock, doctors say teens aren't getting the sleep they need. During adolescence, we lose deep sleep. So if we go to bed even later, we'll lose even more deep sleep. And that sort of sleep is better for you than the sleep you get when you first go to bed. Deep sleep is essential for the body to function properly. The result? Teenagers who should be sleeping nine hours a night are only sleeping seven. 
and they find themselves struggling to stay focused in class. Morning classes at school are hard. We sleep a little in class. According to a study by the National Institute of Health, 40 percent of teens say they often feel tired. Consequences of sleep deprivation include irritability, poor grades and even depression. Teens who go to bed after midnight have a 24 percent higher risk of depression than those who go to bed before 10 o'clock. Doctors say a regular schedule, no caffeine late in the day and no strenuous physical activity after 10 p.m. are the best ways to avoid counting sheep at bedtime. Ever felt the need to grab 40 winks during the working day but don't want to sleep at your desk? Well, increasingly, people are paying to come to places like this central Paris spa to pay to take a catnap. But sleeping isn't always welcome. In much of Africa, it's one of the major symptoms of a highly dangerous disease. Transmitted by tsetse flies, it can lead to organ failure and even death. Aching limbs, confusion and above all, an unending feeling of tiredness. These patients here in the Angolan capital of Luanda are being treated for human African trypanosomiasis, otherwise known as the sleeping sickness. I just want to sleep all the time. I sleep and I'm in pain. My body is constantly tired. The highly invasive parasitic disease is transmitted by tsetse flies. Once inside the body, the parasites eventually cross to the brain and attack the central nervous system. Between 50 and 70,000 people across sub-Saharan Africa are thought to be currently suffering from the disease. Because of a link with cattle, farming communities in remote rural areas with poor health care provision are most at risk. If left untreated, sufferers face a certain death. However, existing treatments are far from perfect. Almost all of the current treatments have to be given by injection, which is not ideal. One of the drugs called melasoprol uh, actually kills 5% of patients. And it's actually very unpleasant for the other 95% of people who survive to have the drug itself. It's very painful to be injected it. However, that situation could be about to change. Professor Wyatt and a team of researchers from Britain and Canada have just identified the parasite's Achilles heel, an enzyme that it can't live without, and they've discovered how to attack it. They now have a potential treatment that's cheaper and less toxic than existing drugs. Clinical trials could be underway within 18 months. If it's effective, it's not the end of the story, however, as it only treats the first stage of the disease. The World Health Organization now wants the team to turn its attention to adapting their discovery to treating the second stage. Time now to leave the relaxation room and to leave you with a story from our strange but true file. The fairy tale of a princess put to sleep by a witch's spell and woken by a kiss from a prince is well known. But have you ever heard of Sleeping Beauty Syndrome? Also known as Klein-Levin Syndrome, sufferers fall into a deep sleep for weeks at an end. Nobody knows what causes it, and sufferers generally grow out of the condition after 8 to 12 years. And that's it for today's programme. Thanks to our producer, Yong Chim, cameraman, Sylvain Rousseau, and of course to you for watching. See you next week for another edition of Health.